to be here. My name is Rodrigo, I'm teaching in product and furniture design, okay? And I don't, I'm not Latin American, I'm Latin, I'm from Spain. Um, but how I want to link it uh, with the topic of this round table is because uh, nine years ago, I did one year off and I went to Chile. When I was a student like you, I finished my classes as a master's student in architecture, and then I decided to take one year off. Uh, and this year was really incredibly valuable for me. Uh, what I did there, uh, I collaborated with different associations or NGOs or things like that. One of them was making many hours. That is this kind of like emergency, emergency shelter uh, for, for people who can have access to housing. Uh, and this really kind of like gave me a view of like how architecture could change lives of people. But as well, uh, I did a bit of collaboration for Elemental, that is this uh, architectural office that is run by Alejandro Arena, who got the Brisker uh, this year. And what I was kind of like more surprised uh, in Chile and in general in South America to, to found is this uh, kind of things. Not the fact that they are sleeping, the fact that they were kind of like uh, transforming the things that they have around them. Uh, so for example, this is a plastic bottle that is converted into a really sophisticated uh, water system. Uh, so today, uh, what I prepared for you is a kind of like a little menu of 20 different projects to tell you one project every minute. But I think I'm going to change it a bit, and I'm going to start with the end, because I think this is what is going to be more relevant for the kind of like common topic of the, of the presentation. start with one of the this project that is related with water and with infrastructure. So all of you are really familiar with this object, right? That we use it to contain water. But probably what you don't know is like how many liters of water you need to use to produce one plastic bottle. Alicia? No, Any guess? No. So to produce this object you need uh, seven liters of water. Seven. Seven. Okay. okay. And full full glass of oil. Okay? Just to produce one object that we're going to use and we're going to throw it away. Eighty percent of the time they don't they don't get recycled. Okay? And if they get recycled, they need a lot of energy to convert it to something that has less value. Okay, you cannot make another kind of like plastic bottles. Uh, it represents as well a lot of the cost when you buy water. So ninety percent of the cost when you buy water is not for the water, it's for the package. Is there. So it, and it's everywhere. It's in Latin America, it's in London, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, it represents a lot of problem in many, many places, especially in these places uh, like Latin America that we don't have. There's not too many resources to kind of like uh, go in there like that. And as well, the curve of water consumption, so it's something that we didn't have uh, many years ago. Mm -hmm. It's something that started in the 70s, and it's increasing 10% every year. So, Christoph, how many water bottles per year do you consume? Can you guess? Um, as a statistical person, as a, as a, as a yeah. yourself, probably two hundred. Yeah. So that's kind of like more or less the average per person. In all, it depends on the countries. Is higher or lower? Uh, depends as well on the water quality. Uh, so that's why um, it's kind of like a propositional project. We propose this. So we call it O, and it's an edible water bottle. Okay. So it's a membrane that could contain water that could be edible. Okay? It's replicated the same way that nature contains liquid uh, using membranes. Membranes, we use it as well in architecture, are really efficient because you use all the forces in traction, not in compression. So it's a much more efficient way you can do less with more. No, more with less, well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and this membrane is made of seaweed. It's a, it's a structure from a seaweed, it's an anime, uh, that enables you to create a, a gelatin membrane to contain liquids. This technique is not new. It's called esterification, and it has been used widely uh, to make uh, other kind of products, like fake caviar in the 50s. Uh, but no one has thought about it as packaging. That is where this kind of like great goes. So we start to do some kind of like experiments with people and try to see if people were getting that uh, of how to bring this. Uh, the subject, it has some issues, as for example, once you open it, you kind of close it back as a plastic bottle. But how you can solve this is the same way that you can solve um, 
like nature is to solve things with membranes. They put mini membranes inside of a bigger membrane. So if you think of an orange, you have a small sieve size container inside of a bigger container. So this is what we're trying to do. A small sieve container inside of a bigger membrane. So this is one of the small ones, and this we want to have five of them. You can make as well double layers, so you can put things. So when we start this project, I was not in Kingston yet. Uh, we didn't have I'm an architect, so I didn't have any kind of like missing background. So we started with kitchen, and we started to do workshop with kids. And one of the most interesting part of the project is that we license it as Creative Commons. So it's kind of like link a bit with uh, what you were saying, like how to do the things open source. And we put that recipe online. And the answer was quite nice. Uh, the video got quite viral, so it got more than 20 million views. And a lot of people start to replicate the recipe that we put online. So these are really enthusiastic people that they were improving or modifying the recipe that we give to them. So this we definitely have as well like 10 million views. This is one of the major shows in Japan where they show the people how to make OS and it's a kind of like super Japanese star in one of them. This is another show in Germany. And after this success, uh, we were kind of like, I do this with two, two colleagues, two friends, that they were before packing in engineers here in Lyon. Um, we were kind of like honored and we got some uh, money to kind of like keep continue this research. So that's kind of the important part as well of like doing research. We didn't get all the money that we could. This is a, an a half a million price that we lost recently. So you didn't feel like cheating. You can see. But thanks to, thanks to kind of like getting some of the money, we were able to put a team together of researchers and famous three students. Um, so at the moment we are based in the incubator of Imperial College, London, in South Kensington, Central London. And we start to run a project with uh, 160 chemistry students to improve the properties of this membrane. So what we have been working is to make it much more resistant, uh, much more durable, and uh, you can see as well of how to make different layers. So for ideal reasons, you can peel it off and you eat the one that you have been set. So now we are able to make it much thicker. We know how much it will last. Uh, this is why, this is how the membrane looks. It looks quite nice because it's similar to the to the super like uh, scaled down views of landscapes. But it's actually a membrane variable as well to make touch sheet membranes. We're able now to adapt a machine. This is a machine that makes paintballs. You know that they little paintballs, but like to do these things, we are learning quite a lot of things related with seaweed that I didn't know at all. Like for example, I don't know if you know, but like this plant grows two meters per day. Imagine something growing two meters per day. Um, we are doing some events to see as well how the people react. So this is a TED event where we provide water to all the people. Uh, it seems like we are going to Wembley to provide uh, water for people in Wembley soon. Um, there's some public policies that is helping a lot to develop the project. Like, I don't know if you do it recently, but like San Francisco and other institutions are kind of like trying to ban plastic bottles. Um, we are not trying to replace plastic at least in terms of durability, but we think we can reach to a level of a fruit. So you can use the system infrastructure to deliver water in the same way that you deliver fruits. Mm. So that's all. Um, a couple of other projects that maybe they would be interested in now. So how you make water and infrastructure about water. So if you think uh, how normally nature does this, nature gets water from the ocean, it evaporates it from the clouds, right? And delivers the water and it flows through rivers. So this project was thinking about how you can do this in an artificial way. So it was the, the idea of creating an artificial cloud that would, would contain that. And the way of doing this is a really simple way of combining existing technologies that have been you know, already there. One is a water desalination that you use with, with sun. Another one is a water balloon. I don't know if you have kind of like seen this kind of like balloon that just get raised by the, uh, by the heat of the sun. So it looks a bit like this, um, the first prototype that we did. So basically it's a balloon that contains water vapor. So uh, it's, it's half this size in the prototype, but in reality, it should, should be kind of like almost as big as a big set of in, so almost 100 meters in order to deliver water to a big city. And how it works, it kind of like stays in the ocean with the, with the kind of like the sun, uh, it's able to operate water from the, from the sea. When the water operates from the sea, it's water vapor that is lighter than air. That's why kind of like clouds goes up. 
so this ballon is able to kind of like fly around and you can control it uh, and deliver whatever is needed. It's quite similar to what uh, Google is doing with internet. I don't know if I've seen the project Loon with big balloons to deliver inter internet in different kind of like cities uh, with water. It's not like a crazy idea. The first balloons uh, the Mongolia brothers did more than 100 years ago, they were made with water vapor. And it's what nature used to transport water. It's not like they only go, uh, they go through, the, through the air, not through the land. Um, so yeah, that's some, some kind of things. And I can leave it here, or I can explain you some other projects, whatever you want. More? OK. Um, All right, so when I come back to Chile, I start to, I was really fascinated by these transformations, so I start to do my own transformations. Um, so one of the transformations that I try to see is how to convert really ugly objects that they were in the public space into really beautiful ones. So for example, a cigarette butt, if you put a little seed, when you throw it away, it benefits from the humidity of the filter and it germinates a flower. So you can convert something that is happening and it smells bad into something that is beautiful. Uh, I did a lot of work with garbage uh, and little communities. So this was in Chile uh, with plastic bags. There is a lot of plastic bags kind of like at this other time going around. And uh, with the help of some kids, we were able to make uh, balls. That nowadays, no one knows how to make a ball. That is the most basic kind of like element of play. Uh, so this is some of them. And we did as well other, other elements, not only balls, but the llamas and things like that. Um, I did other kind of like little transformations, but funny, this is a handle, so you know when the, someone is opening the door, because it's just, <laughs> just a bicycle horn transformer. Um, then I come back to Spain, and I was really fascinated by these kind of structures. I don't know if you are familiar with them. Yes. Uh, uh, so a replayable structure, this is the thesis of Santiago Calatrava. This is kind of like Spanish engineer or an architect. This is Chuck Oberman. This is an engineer from, uh, from New York that works a lot with posters. That he's quite famous because the toy, the Oberman ball. Probably you know them because of that. So I start to do my own, uh, my own little kind of like structure by then. But that is based on Mr. Fuller, mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, uh, kind of is, is basically Mr. Fuller. Fuller had some uh, deployable structures as well. And most of them are security structures. Well, the video is not playing. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry. Let's see. Basically, it's a scissor system that you can combine. Probably you are familiar with the scissor system that you see in bathrooms and things like that. And if you combine it three-dimensionally, you can not, not only expand uh, horizontally, but as well vertical. That it was the object of this investigation. It was in Madrid. There is a lot of uh, structures that they are deployable, but most of them are to deploy like big, big structures in a horizontal way. That is kind of like little piece of research was how to do something in vertical. Experimenting quite a lot, it was a big challenge of like try to define what I was doing and try to draw uh, and find the mathematical model of it. Uh, 
as well probably it's interesting for research. Yeah, I, I try to write everything and I try to kind of like develop patterns out of it. That is another way of quantifying uh, research and getting funds. So this was the pattern of this specific uh, project. And then I try to make it a, a building out of it. So I try to uh, dimension the structure so it could fit on a track. Um, and again, the quality of the image is not really good. Sorry about that. But like, it's supposed to be a, a 12 floor building that you can install in three hours. So that was kind of like the, the aim of the project. The structure looks really complicated, but actually it's quite simple. It only has like three kinds of bars. And it works structurally really well, because uh, especially for wind, uh, you, you need these kind of like things. Mm -hmm. You complement the structure with another element. Uh, again, it's not really legible. In terms of like infrastructure and in terms of apartments or horizontal walls and things like that. And at the end, uh, you have a process that, as I say, you can kind of like develop a 12 storage building in, in less than three, four hours. The idea was to apply this in emergency situations, as we have some of, some of the work that we have seen today. So you don't need to move the people from the place where the emergency happened. You can kind of like build it around. Or for other kind of like situations, like for example, when I was doing this, it was when Spain, like Madrid, was applying to be the Olympic game uh, host, and they were kind of like building crazy infrastructure outside of the city that never is going to be used. So if people build infrastructure with this kind of like system, they could rent it out to Rio de Janeiro, that is the city that won. So they can it opens the possibility of like renting out buildings uh, from one place to another. Um, this is another situation where you have it this building a construction site and you move it depends where that's going. Uh, I developed these structures a bit more. Uh, this is a video that probably is, is not uh, enough time to see it. Um, this is in India working as well with these structures to with people. This is in Turkey with kids uh, playing a bit more with toys. This is a similar investigation that I carried on the Royal College Park. That is where I was before here. There was, a, was again a, like a, a structure that could be flexible, so you can make flexible buildings in all the scales, not only in a bigger scale, but as well in a smaller scale, so you could have a surface that you can model yourself and you have it on the computer or opposite. So it looks like this. So as an architectural block, well, this is not, but an architectural section of a building could move depending on what you want, so it could be something flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, I have done more transformations related with barbics and this time architecture, so this is a big, a lot of plastic bags put together and inflated. So yes, this is a kind of like one day workshop with the students in Madrid. Um, this is a little project for IKEA, they ask to make the cheapest house that you can make, and they give us 1,000 pounds, I think. So we spend, I think, like 20 in bucks, we inflate them, and we could spend the rest in our own. <laughs> kind of like things. Uh, the same with Piper Bags, but this is in India, kind of like a little inflatable shelter. This is in Sweden, kind of like other kind of like, I don't know, nonsense project. We try to kind of like cross the lake with a big iceberg. We fell in the middle, so not all of the projects are successful. Um, again, another project with plastic bottles. Uh, so this was how to make a plastic bottle something else, in this case a building. So we use this technique of putting a uh, vacuum into a big kind of like bag, so you can make a structure with it. And what we did with that, uh, we did big kind of like structures where the bottles are contained to these kind of like big plastic bags, so you don't have other structures that the, uh, that the water, water bottles and the vacuum. And the good thing of this is that you can kind of like create vacuum and you can change the building whenever you want. So it's a, again a kind of like a flexible building. So you open just the ball and you just change the shape. Uh, and we did this in different cities that it was quite nice as well to involve the community collecting all the bottles. So the previous one, it was in Paris. This is in Poland. Uh, this one, the first one, this one is in uh, the Venice Biennale in uh, four years ago. Not the, pre not the elements, but the previous one. Little transformation, but probably I don't know if we have time. Uh, yeah, 
uh, related mode with product or how you can make a product as well flexible and transform it for, so this is a chair for thick or thin people. So you just kind of like, this is the same chair, but you can kind of like adapt it. Or how to transform, this is a chewing gum. Uh, when I was in Spain, a lot of people used to put chewing gums under the chair. And here, and the people are a bit more polite. But the, there's a reason that you can make uh, the chewing gum quite hard, so actually you can create a copy out of this habit of a chair. Uh, the same for a lamp. I was looking as well a lot for the future of objects and how that will relate with infrastructure. So I was looking at the suitcase. The suitcase is a really stupid object that was invented like 100 years ago. And only like 30 years ago, someone thought about putting it wheels. So it's like quite a stupid combination. And so I did this project uh, back in Sweden, where, let's see if it plays. Oh, so, sorry. So, basically, it's a suitcase that follows the owner. So, basically, how it works, it has three sensors three Bluetooth sensors that track the signal of your phone, so it knows where your phone is, so it can follow you at a certain distance. And the idea of this is that it could change quite a lot, like how we carry suitcase, our families and things like that, but as well how infrastructure works, especially airports or train stations, where there's a lot of space dedicated and a lot of effort dedicated to transport of luggage. Mm. Oh, I have done some... Uh, Another deployable stuff that's applicable to objects. So this is a following, uh, uh, sorry, a foldable bike that is not like as complex as a Bronton or as expensive as a Bronton. It's a system that you can incorporate to any bike. And it's as simple as kind of like folding and unfolding. Uh, you can see it now. So you just need to open the bike, and that's it. It takes much more to stand than a front bike. Um, things related with as well cycling. So cycling is an experience that is quite nice, but you cannot listen to music because if you listen to music through headphones, you don't hear the traffic. So, but there's another way of listening to music that is through bone conduction. So if, if your bones kind of like vibrate, <laughs> you can listen to music. So actually, this is a I kind of like it's the same thing that is inside of the speakers, but like your the music goes through your butt. <laughs> so you listen to music at the same time you listen to the to the, to the thing. Um, this is a kind of like quite stupid project, but it was how to put a. Uh, let's see. It's more. Right, it's fine. It's not. It's, it, it, it was a robotic ball, so it was empowering kids that they want to play kind of like versus Cristiano Ronaldo in the computer, but to play not the bar. See if it works. I'm oh, sorry about that. All the media is my phone. But basically, it's a ball that you can control wherever you um, Another project related with an object, but in a way, enough space. I found in London there is a lot of like space dedicated to mobs. Every house has kind of like one square meter dedicated to a wardrobe where you put just your mob. And that's quite a stupid thing. So, uh, Basically, this is a, it's a mob that appears and disappears. So you can just fold it quite quickly. Um, other thoughts related with infrastructure and public space. So cars is a private thing that is on public space. So why not? If you have a car in the city, you have to provide some kind of service to the, to the citizen that is there. So you can use the light, or you can use it as a bench. So there was a collaboration. Um, I still do some things with architecture and public space. Uh, so this is a competition uh, in Poland, in Warsaw. I don't know if you have been there, but like, this is one of the most iconic buildings. Uh, it's called the Rotonda, and it's full of, uh, well, it's very noisy, the urban environment. And that actually was a super nice kind of like sitting uh, icon in the middle of the city in the 70s. That was quite nice, especially the roof. But they have this big explosion. Uh, they have to regulate, and they regulate really, really badly. This is how it looks in the interior at the moment. 
So they launched this international competition that they kind of changed the face of this icon. Uh, and most of the entries, they were something like this. So they were kind of like trying to put a Saha Hadid style skin around this kind of like really nice modernist architecture. Um, so with uh, one Polish friend that I'm working with, uh, we propose a strategy of just cleaning the face of this building. Uh, so analyzing quite well how it was and trying to bring it back of, of the original statement. So this is kind of like all the little pieces that we analyzed that they were there before. And we did a kind of, oh, again, the building is not really nice here. But we did a strategy of like, to convert this into a, again into an icon, try to clean up the, the surroundings and put in a big mirror. So you could kind of like see uh, not only the building as it is, but like as well a little kind of like moon uh, and see the reflection of the of the square in the middle. So it would look something like this. So the building gets a, a bit of more of relevance because at the moment there's a lot of like high sc high scrapers around. Um, we won the first stage, so it was quite nice, but we lost the second round because the bank didn't like it too much. <laughs> it's quite nice. Um, another recent project as well related, I didn't link it too much in the presentation, but I tried to link all the projects somehow with magic, um, in this case with misdirection, that is this strategy that magicians use to focus what is the important thing. So, uh, they ask us to change the use of this building that is a school again in Warsaw that looks like this and they wanted to put a big exhibition about urbanism of Warsaw for a period of time and later on they will kind of demolish the building again to build a Sahadi tower uh, so it was quite nice and what we did is did this kind of like magician strategy of put the focus or the attention in certain points and as how the building it was going to be demolished we didn't have any problem to kind of like break things. So what we did, we just hire a lot of destruction tools and we start to kind of like break walls and see which kind of like uh, things we could do with these tools. And this was the idea of the project, just to kind of like keep some of the things that we wanted to show for the exhibition and try to kind of like erase all the rest. It's kind of like, the building it was quite huge, so you have like five floors and different kind of like points of focus. So this is how it looks, kind of like at the very end, different studies of, of destruction. And I think we can leave it here. Yeah. Thank you very much.